Hello. Look, first and foremost, you know I'm not here without your viewership. So thank you so much for clicking this video and being part of this show. Second, this is for those who want and who can do more. You have options in the description below. Pick the one that fits you best. May I just suggest a membership program? Why? Because it is the easiest way and the fastest way to support the channel without thinking so hard. But understand that you watching from start to finish, liking and subscribing if you haven't subscribed yet, interacting with the video pushes the algorithm forward. So do not minimize the importance of your essence as a viewer. That being said, thank you a ton. The Lori Vallow trial is absolutely bonkers. First of all, there's a lot going on. And um, it may seem like clear cut, but according to what the defense is saying, it may not be. Now, in the United States, you are innocent until proven guilty, but in a court of public opinion, to hell with that. Who cares about that? That's a true story. So I'm going to follow this case. I'm going to dissect this case, and we're going to do it together. You're going to follow my content slash operating flow of this trial. I want to go back to a few basics so we understand a little bit what the hell is going on, what is happening, and what has happened. I'm going to try to dissect this to the best of my abilities. But understand, if you're new here, I am Alistair Hanzekio, and this is just my point of view. Mm -hmm. Let's get started. So what's going on tonight? I can't get in touch with my kids. How old are your kids? Six and a half and sixteen. Okay. Um, How long have you been trying? Two days. Okay. But she, she's lost her mind. I, I, I don't know how else to say it. We're LDS. She thinks she's a resurrected being and a and a a God and remember the 144,000 she's come to Jesus is coming next year she took all the money out of her bank account today my truck had gone from the airport she went to the airport and got it I just flew in from Houston from Dallas Houston and Dallas so uh, where's your truck? I don't know okay. I took a good friend of mine's truck he picked me up I went to the CSI to file a report uh, which is the okay who you're seeing right now is Lori's ex-husband Charge Valo. Why is that significant? I wanted to start with this because I want to go back a little bit in time. My point here in this saga is to show you with as much critical thinking as I can, her mindset. And with a mindset, you can get clear intent. After this, five months later, he is dead. And Lori is charged with potentially being accomplice or culprit to his murder. As you heard, he's looking for his children. He can't get in touch with his kids. She emptied the bank account. She might be lunatic according to him, but to hell with that. Where are my kids? I, where are my kids? This is a worried father. Why is this so worried? Because there's a history of things that don't make sense. And he is completely not comfortable with Lori, his ex-wife, being with his children. As you heard, he said very clearly is that, you know, he didn't even quite know where to start because of how ludicrous it might sound. Lori believes that she is a deity. And listen, if you believe you are God, you know what that means? That means nothing applies to you. That means you are above the law. You're so above that you have control and exclusive right over life and death of who of anyone you are jury executor you are judge you are all of the above it's an absolutely dangerous complex to have but does lori have that complex that's what i'm going to try to prove to you today with my critical thinking and the evidence that i have does lori truly believe that she is God, or at the very least, a vessel of God's will. Let's continue this video. Community bridges or something, file a report. So you did, ordered, you, did, you did the petition? Yeah, they ordered a pickup. Okay. What they time did. did you do 
do that? Hour and a half ago. Okay. So what makes her a danger to herself and she to others? She threatened me, murder me, kill me. She threatened she, to murder you? Yes. And she said How did she do that? My, my bishop right there is in the car. He was on the phone with me today when she said, I will have you destroyed. That's what she said there. Okay, that's not that's not a threat to kill you. Yesterday was a threat to kill me. Today, okay. Of what did, what did she say yesterday? She said, you're not Charles. I don't know who you are, what you did with Charles, but I can murder you now with my powers. Okay. 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 So, listen, I don't know who needs to hear this. This is PSA. If someone threatens to harm you physically, forget murder. You take that seriously. And not only do you take it seriously, you address it right away. This is not this is not something you joke about. Because no matter what you are, who you believe, what you believe, you don't deserve to have hands put on you. Do you understand me? So anybody makes the mistake to create that threatened situation, you go all the way. Because what's the alternative? That you die? Excuse me? Absolutely not. What Charles here is saying is that, listen, officer, the reason why this is so troubling to me is because she's threatened me many times, many, many, many times. The officer's like, well, what? she just used the word destroy. No, 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 officer. She used the word murder. Murder with what? With her powers. But there's something there also that I want to bring up because this is where the question of perception becomes very important. We all look at the sky, right? It's blue, right? I think we can all agree. Some people might not see the sky blue. People who are colorblind might not see the sky blue. So perception is quite relative, and that's okay. The problem arises when that conception, when that perception crosses a very dangerous crossroad of what? Violence, injury, and death. That's where the problem lies. But, as I mentioned to you earlier, to me, there is a piece of the puzzle here that doesn't make sense. Let's, fi let's finish the video, and I'll tell you all my thought, part one. Okay. Okay. All right. So you're gonna, I'm gonna kill you too. I'm gonna. Uh, yesterday was. I'm so gonna she's speaking you. as a spiritual being. She's, she's not here. Okay. She's lost her reality. Is, has, is this sick. is this just all recent, or has it been it's going on? Been going on for about four or five years. It's gotten really, really bad lately. She goes to the temple every day and speaks with Moroni and Jesus Christ, and they tell her what to do. And now she came to her today, and last couple of days she says, I'm not Charles, uh, you're not Charles, you're Nick Schneider. I don't know where she gets his names from. She got all this stuff from these people in Utah who uh, tell her how many past lives she's had and, and, and probation she's had. And she uh, uh, was married to Moroni back way back when, and she was also married to James the Just. And, uh, um, okay, this is all foreign to me, so. It's just, it's foreign to me. Well, I'm not else. Okay, as you heard, she's a member of a church. And ever since five years ago, there's been a progression pretty much downhill, according to Charles Varlow. A progression of what? Of her perception. Her reality, her concept of the world has started to change. But why? Because the church has been telling her so. There has been an outside influence directing her to believe that she is an entity. She is a deity. Now, <laughs> I don't know who needs to hear this. Um, if you think you're a god, you're not. <laughs> I, uh, okay. Anyway, listen to me. Because this is where my red flag starts to ding. For someone to be easily influenced on such a grandeur, there needs to be a predisposition. It could be medical, it could be whatever, right? It needs to be a predisposition to allow yourself to be swindled into the perception that you are God. Wouldn't you like to be God? Isn't that such a sweet deal? Please, I'm God, darling. Isn't that such an amazing deal? Who do you think is most predisposed to absorb that story. Exactly. And the question here, my first question in this segment is, is Lori, did she really lose her concept of right and wrong? Because you could have 
different perception and different point of views, but we all know what's right and what's wrong. When you take someone that's schizophrenic, they might not quite understand that concept because there's something not 100% right in here, right? But if you take someone with a different perception, they understand very well. Like, look, I cannot just go around and stop murdering everybody. Do you understand what I'm saying? So they still have a concept of right and wrong, which means that their perception of the world is not absolute. It's within a certain spectrum. But Lori acted in an absolute way, right? So that's the first question. Let's go to the next segment. Mm -hmm. You know what? It was such a struggle because you go to hospital, you go back to school. I try to talk to the teachers, but in high school, I don't care. They don't care. You're not here to do the work, or don't. Like they don't care. They're they're so with high school, it's like they're just pumping. But when she was in elementary and junior high, all the teachers worked with her. They were nice about it. But by high school, there's so many kids they just don't care. And I was like, just take it. You're so smart. Let's just take it, see if you pass it. She passed it. Like and got a really good score. Yeah, she passed it with like college ready in every category the first time. Well, and now she can do what she wants. So exactly. She's she's better off that way. Mm-hmm. Okay. I know Laura is your first name, right? Yeah. L A U R. L O R I. Okay. And then what's your last name? Vallow. V A L L O W. And your date of birth? And your phone number? And you live at the house, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I know this sounds silly, Mm -hmm. um, but it's probably the easiest way to start Mm -hmm. um, is just to tell me what happened. And then, so you can start what makes the most sense to you, and we'll just work our way through, and I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions just to kind of clarify. Sure. So I know you talked to the initial patrol officer. um, And And he just got information. Oh, okay. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, if you can just kind of... Tell me kind of what happened. It sounds like some of this may have started last night or something along those lines. Right. So start where you think it makes the most sense. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I, don't I told you. It's yeah. a crazy question. <laughs> well, so we moved into this house three weeks ago because he offered to- Okay. This is very significant. So... Follow me along with this one. This is after her husband, Charles, the ex-husband, was murdered. What is the first thing she did? You may have missed it, but I picked it up. She walked into that precinct. Oh, wow. Oh, jolly. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You must have missed it. I'm going to play it again in the editing. Oh, wow. Like, she's going to the mall. She's going to the store. She's going to buy candy. She's going to go shopping. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Her ex-husband has been murdered. Listen, listen, that murder involves her kids. So even if she was not in the best of mood, even if she hated him with passion, her children were involved in that particular incident. That fact alone should make you feel at least recoil to the point where you're not going in there happy-go-lucky. She's going there happy-go-lucky. Now... As she is chatty, I get into what she's saying in a little bit, but that doesn't matter for now. I want you to pay attention. I'm going to look at, put it up in the editing. I want you to pay attention to her eyes. She's very chatty. And as soon as the the detective puts her head down, as soon as the detective is no longer observant, what does she do? She observes at what the detective is writing. What is, what is she writing? She's gathering information. She's gathering intelligence. I want you to pay attention to that. I'll play that again. There's so many kids, they just don't care. And I was like, just take it, you're so smart. Let's just take it, see if you pass it. She passed it. Like, and got a really good score. And, yeah, she passed it with like college ready in every category the first time. Well, and now she can do what she wants. So exactly. She's, she's better off that way. Mm-hmm. Okay. I know Laura's your first. As soon as the detectives 
disengages for a second to have a seat to write things down she is gathering intel what are you writing down what are you doing what's that paper what is that that is a sign of extreme critical thinking that means she understands very well what is going on there's no there's no weird convoluted concept of anything she knows she knows what happened she knows what's what this is about and she is putting a charm she's putting a charm And the third piece before I, I press play, I want you to analyze and look how she how she falls in. She comes in forward. She leads in. She puts her hands together. That's a self losing technique. But she's lean in. She's engaged. She's engaged because she wants to not miss a beat. She wants to understand what's being said, but she also wants to read the body language of the pro of the detective. She wants to know what do you know. How much do you know? What can I get away with, with what I have to tell you? She's gathering intelligence for the story she's about to say and how she's going to say it. We've seen this before, guys. So the detective said, look, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense. There's a lot of moving pieces. Please tell me in your best of recollection, how does that make sense to you? Let's listen to what she says. Get me a house here where all my family is. So okay. we were in Houston. And um, so he's like, we had decided to separate or whatever. So mm -hmm. we, he's like, well, I'll pay for a house for you and for JJ and whatever. Because he's all about JJ. He's never about Tylee, but he's all mm -hmm. about JJ. Because mm -hmm. so, we adopted him together. He's okay. his great nephew. We adopted him as a okay. baby. And, and so we adopted him as a baby and so we've been raising him together and he travels all the time for business so he's used to just going back and forth so he's always gone like Monday through Friday so he came when we first moved in and brought me stuff from Houston like a U-Haul and then he hasn't been back but it's all these threats on my phone all the time you know like whatever all these things and then he told like, me what kind of threats just You'd have to read them to see, okay. but he's always mad at me, right? Okay. And he doesn't want to. This is, the reason why she can't recall those threats is because they probably were not that threatening. Or she didn't see them as threatening. And so when the detective is asking, well, what kind of threats? It didn't fit into her story. She was not prepared for that answer. So she didn't have an answer. And she chose not to answer because she understood that can easily be seen. And so I don't want to... I want to say something I'm going to regret, but the real reason why there was, there was a stutter there is because she is starting to create a story of a man who was not very that nice anyway, right? He travels all the time. He's never around. He, um, he likes JJ. Anyway, he apparently, according to her, likes only one of the kids. Um, and he's threatening her. That's an interesting story for someone that was murdered, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But in addition to how she tells this story, she says it with a straight face, but she says it with some hidden comfortability because she's still grasping her hands. She's moving a lot. She's fidgeting a lot. She's distracting her physical to not interfere with her mental. Because she is thinking very fast, very quick. She's, she's telling us, she's spinning a story, darling. She doesn't have time. She doesn't want anything to interfere with that. And notice how she slouched. And pay attention to her eyeballs. She's looking at what the detective is writing. She's still gathering intelligence. Let's continue doesn't want a divorce, but I don't like him and don't want to deal with him, so that's just how it is. Like, yeah. So we married for 14 years, we've dealt with him for 14 years, and him being horrible to her. Like, he gets in huge fights with her, he, yeah, a lot of things. But anyway, so he said, I'm coming Wednesday night, all of a sudden. I'm not, I want to see JJ, and I told him, I said, I will never keep JJ from you. Mm -hmm. You can come see him whenever you want to, come take him to school, whatever, like, I'm not going to do that. 
So when you initially moved, he had said he was going to buy you a house. So you moved here with your Yeah, he was going to rent us a house. And so you moved. All my family lives here. So right. we lived here for a long time. Okay. And then he moved us to Houston. Okay. And we were there with my son. He was out of school. He didn't have any of his, like, services, his DDD, his yeah. anything. He, like, ripped him out of school and said, we're moving. Okay. And I didn't go with him at first. And he took him. And I let him take him, uh -huh. and I didn't file anything or whatever. And then he filed something against me and said, I'm only going to get supervised visits because I'm crazy and blah, 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 you know, the story. And so I just didn't talk to him for like 30 days. Oh, she keeps painting him in a negative light. But have you noticed that she forgot to mention the fact that she's a deity? She believes that she's a goddess? And this is red flag number two for me. Because a true schizophrenic person, a person who truly believes that who they are with no sense of right and wrong, she would be like, who are you, officer? I am a goddess, okay? I do what the hell I want. Matter of fact, you're not the officer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna you. No. She turned it off. She's able to turn it on and off. If you don't know what that means, that means that she understands very clearly right and wrong and she understands who is able to perceive that story in a certain kind of way she is a chameleon people who have the world completely wrapped in a different reality cannot do that they stay in that reality no matter who's in front of them she just turned it off darling at first glance, you think it's a very nice, lovely woman, oh, giggling wow. and laughing. Oh, wow, it's nice here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would never think that she believes that she's a goddess and that she can smite you where you stand. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? That's a mindset, and that is absolutely important because it's a skill to turn that on and off. It's a skill. It's a skill. It's a skill. If this was not in a detective setting, she would have fling through the radar. And let him take care of him. And let him see what I've been doing for yeah. the past seven years. Because men need to do that. You don't have five kids. Yeah. I have grown kids. I have grandkids. Yeah. Like, okay, you're going to threaten me that you're not going to let me see my child without supervised visitation? Yeah. Okay, do it for 30 days and see how long it lasts. You right. bet you need to come pick him up. Yeah. Which he did. <laughs> She's like, come back and what are So I moved in with them to Houston okay. to, for the family, you know, and yeah. Tyler went with me. We drove to Houston from here and left all our family and all his support, all my yeah. son's support, like his cousins, everything. And we were there and I enrolled him in school there. I tried to start all his services and it takes forever. Yeah. You know, it takes so mm -hmm. long to get that done. There's, no, there's no easy transfer. There's anything. no easy transfer. You start her crossing her legs there is actually a comfortable position. She's getting more comfortable in her story. Her, um, her feel-good chemicals are kicking in. She's enjoying the storytelling. She is having a good old time painting Charles in a negative light and painting her as the one who saves the day. And the detective is nodding in agreement. It's making her feel comfortable. Therefore, she disengages. She disengages from being a little reclore to being comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But what she doesn't understand is that this is, the, this is a trained detective, Laurie. And this is the thing with narcissists. Is that they love hearing themselves talk and they absolutely love when they tell a story and they love it more when you go like this uh huh uh huh uh huh mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you give them confirmation so far she talked for about six minutes this is after the death the murder of her ex-husband where her daughter was involved. And for six minutes, she's just like, hello, hi, darling. Hey, yes, wow, what beautiful here. I'm the amazing person. He was, he didn't even like her anyway. And I'm here saving the day. She's just, it's all about her. There's no concept of the severity of the situation. 
And she turned off. She turned off the pièce de résistance, which is her, how she views herself. Right here, she's immortal. At home, she's a goddess. Mm. Okay, so now we are going to watch same day, same precinct, same detective, but this time the daughter, the teenager in question, is being inter interrogated. Mind you, this is after the death of her father. I want you to pay attention on the contrast differences of a teenager who understands the severity of what happened, understands the significance of where she is sitting. And she has no behind agenda, no devious intention. She just wants to follow the rules. Look at the stark difference between the two. Hi. Hi. So you have to spell your name because we're all taking guesses on how to spell it. You're not sure. T-Y-L-E-E. -E. Okay, I was right. Already one of the bad, she is pseudo-depressed. She's not happy. Please, her dad has been murdered. She's not happy. She's pseudo-depressed. She's, the moment is depressing her. Right? She is completely within a shell. And she stays like that even when she engages the detective. She doesn't change mental state. She is distraught. Now, you might ask yourself, might say to yourself, that's a 16 year old, of course. Listen, 16 or not, it doesn't matter. Someone that you know is dead. Not having a reaction is very peculiar to certain situations. Because not everybody's supposed to have a reaction, right? Right? Some people may not have a reaction, of course. I'm not denying that. But what's important here is that the death is weird. So she's like, uh, 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 uh. there is a seriousness in her energy. She's so depressed, but she's serious because she understands how important where she's at. Right? This is not the time to kick here, have a good time, and go for drinks, darling. No. I'm in a precinct being interviewed by a detective for the death of someone I know. What? I'm not having kickies and laughters. I'm serious. Anyway. And what's your last name? Ryan. R-Y-A-N. And your birthday. And then, do you have a phone? Yeah. What's your phone number? Okay, so... I <laughs> That's a long phone number. What a beep. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, she's nervous. She's playing with herself. She's still very much in the same mental state position. Okay? And keep in mind, she's not talking unless she's being asked a question. Meaning she's paying attention attentively and she is making sure that she tells her truth. There's no devious intentions to, uh, in French, they say manigancer, magouiller, to uh, divert or distract. No. What is it? Left, right, up, down, right, left. I said that already. Okay, whatever. But do you understand what I'm trying to say? <laughs> I got an interesting message. It's from Linda. Linda? I'm not gonna watch it now, but girl, yeah, I'll get in touch with you later. Mm -hmm. I know this is gonna kind of sound like kind of a silly question um, because it's super broad, um, but can you basically tell me what happened today? And you can start at whatever place makes sense for you um, to kind of start and explain. I'll probably kind of ask you questions as we go a little bit. So I... There was no giggle, there was no laughter, there was no, it's a serious situation. She's just going to say the, her truth. Big difference. Lori. I woke up probably around like 7.50 I want to say because I heard yelling. 
from like right outside my door. And I, just, I don't even know where, but I immediately like jumped up and I have a baseball bat because when I was living at my uncle's by myself, I just wanted something to like mm -hmm. feel safer and I'm not old enough to get like pepper spray or anything. So I was like, okay, I'll get a baseball bat. So I have that. So your bedroom, you said that right outside your bedroom door, and I didn't go in the house, so I'm at okay. a little bit of a disadvantage. So what so is your bedroom door open to? My bedroom door open, so the room that my uncle was staying in, the mm -hmm. room that's kind of like the guest room, if my room's right here, that's right there. Okay. And then my um, little brother's room, and then kitchen's kind of back here, so it's like a little hallway, and okay. then right here is kind of where everything happened. Okay. Like the big, you walk in and... Like big great room kind of living room. Yeah, right now it just has mirrors up because my mom wanted a dance room. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Kind of unconventional, but. Hey, okay. whatever makes you happy. It's your guys' house. So. Right. So, yeah, I immediately just jumped up and I grabbed my baseball bat and I opened the door and it was my stepdad, you know, outside the doorway and then my uncle kind of in the doorway and then I could hear my mom behind him and he was just screaming at both of them like I don't even know what he was saying because honestly I was just too like like wired I guess mm -hmm. so I told him to take a few steps back I was like you're too close you need to step back and he was like don't tell me what to do and I just kind of just stood there and then my uncle kind of moved out of the way and then my mom kind of went past him and into like the big room okay where everything happened, and so I walked with them, and then I... So they were them. more in the hallway. Yeah, they were at, like, the end of the hallway, okay. basically. And so my mom walked all the way around, and he kind of followed them. And I just kind of stood. My uncle was, like, right here, and then my stepdad right here, and then me and my mom were kind of right here. And I didn't do anything with the base all that. I kind of just held it there. And he was getting really close to my mom, so I kind of stuck it out, like, between them. And they were both just yelling and he was like if you hit me with that baseball bat you're gonna go to jail and I just kind of stood there with the baseball bat and I just I didn't really say anything. When you said they were yelling who was yelling? My it was mostly my stepdad. Okay. Well he was really the only one like yelling. Mm -hmm. My mom was kind of like responding mm -hmm. but I honestly couldn't tell you what they were saying. It was okay. kind of just like all jumbled up in my head. And so I just kind of stuck the baseball bat out there, and then he, like, he just grabbed it and tried to take it. So I held on to the end, and then eventually I fell, and he kind of took it into his hands like he was going to do something with it. And that's when... So when you fell, he ended up with the bat? Yeah. Okay. And so I fell to the ground, and then my uncle kind of, like, I saw him take a step back, so I'm, my uncle, I think, grabbed him and kind of took him back so he couldn't, like, do anything. You saw your stepdad, so like, take a step back? Take a step back, because he was really close okay. to begin with, and then I kind of, and so my mom said to go with JJ, and so I ran out the door, and then I kind of just stood there with my little brother. Just, he was in the front seat of the car, and so I just kind of opened the door and just stood there, and, like, he was trying to get out. And I was like, no, we have to stay. We have mm -hmm. to stay in. And I was like, oh, like, do you, I was, well, I told him, like, do you want to go in the Jeep? And then he was like, no. And then I realized that my car was blocked in, so I couldn't anyways. I was like, okay, like, just stay here. And then eventually my mom came out. Mm -hmm. And then we left from there. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what happened inside of the house? Has your mom kind of explained it all to you? Um, I just kind of asked her, like, because I heard a noise. Mm hmm which I know what it was now, but it sounded like, because I knew that the base when I was in there, it sounded like someone, like, took it and hit it really hard against the floor. Okay. Um, and so I was kind of like, like, I was okay, right, because that's my uncle. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make sure that, like, my stepdad didn't do anything to my uncle and okay. stuff. And so she was like, no, like, I was fine. Like, we're just going to take Jay to school. And I was like, okay. So I just got in the car, and then... We went to Burger King because my little brother wanted breakfast, mm -hmm. which was chicken fries mm -hmm. for no reason. Okay. I do dinner for breakfast all the time. <laughs> breakfast for dinner and dinner for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Um, so... There. Now you understand what happened to Charles.
So Laurier and her brother claim it was self-defense. The teenager told you there was a there was a scuffle going on downstairs. She woke up because she's apparently, according to her, if you read between the lines, she wants extra protection. So something may have happened. And so she goes and grabs her bat, goes downstairs, and her stepfather, her father, to be quite honest, grabs the bat. Like, girl, Olympia, what are, what are you doing? <laughs> Give that to me. But here's the thing. The father grabbed the bat because he did not want his daughter involved. I can tell you right now, I would want my kids involved in a dispute I'm having with my spouse. No, 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 no. No, because that will affect the child. No. So I understand what the father is like, give me the bat. But when he grabbed the bat, they shot him. Oh, self-defense. Well, I, sum I summarize it. No, okay, look, this is what happened. After she fell to the floor, the mother's like, get out with your brother. She got out, but she heard a noise. But in that room, you know, you, you know what happened. They shot him because he had a bat in the hand. So the daughter didn't really see the shotgun happen. She just thought it was the bat being... Um, anyway, my whole point of me telling you this is I want you to understand that Lori, the one that we just saw earlier laughing, gigging, and be like, oh, wow, so nice in here. She was there at that moment. She experienced a gunshot. She saw with her eyeballs. Her ex husband being shot multiple times. And they went to Burger King, darling. They want to have lunch, darling. There's a disconnect. But it's not the disconnect you might think. Because she has all of her marbles. Someone with no marbles does not under, cannot, is not able to disconnect, to turn it on and off, depending on who's in front of them. She is absolutely dangerous. She is so dangerous because guess what? That little girl that we just saw, she's dead. And her little brother, dead. She's on trial for that. That's how dangerous she was. She thought she was God, but she understood very well, right and wrong. She understood very well what murder is. She understands very well what taking a life is, but she didn't care. Because in her mind, she's like, ah, everybody thinks I'm a goddess? That I am, must be a goddess. I am God. Listen, there is no better complex than a God complex on a narcissist. They love that. What? A narcissist with a parish? A narcissist with <laughs> tributes? Please, that's their dream. Every day they're told they're beautiful and they're amazing. Every day they are needed and wanted. This is their dream. And... God forbid anyone will come in the way of that, including her kids. Please, raising kids is a lot of work. You don't have time to play God when you have to raise kids and children. Please, you, you can't you can't entertain everybody else when you know when you have two kids. A teenager has that. You know, teenagers have attitude. You know, they have attitude. That's my phone. Leave me alone, please, please. And you have to cater to Joe Smith, Henry, Richard, Charlotte. You have to cater to all these people in your parish. Was like, help me, help me, help me. No, you don't have time for that, children. You you're a burden. I'm living my best life. Yeah. Mm hmm. Hmm. So, this is a midpoint of this video, and I want to point two things. <laughs> First one is, if you like it so far, so far, press like, press like. If you haven't done so, subscribe. And if you really want to, you can just share it. <laughs> And click the bell notification. I hope I got my fingers very well. Anyway, let's move on to the next segment because there's more. So this phone call is from Lori's ex-best friend. And this happened after both of her kids are missing. Please, both of the kids are dead. 
Let's listen to how this phone call is. Sweet Melanie. Hi, Chad. Hey, Lori. Hi. Hey, let me put on speaker. Oh, okay. What of the bat? <laughs> Hello, sweet, sweet Melanie. Look, this is not even the father. This is not even the father of your kids. Let's just assume she's innocent. Darling, I just lost two of my kids. No, I'm not talking sweet to you like this. I don't have your mind. If anything, if I'm not depressed myself all the way to the ground, I'm certainly not having a kicky or happy moment. Are you crazy? This is where I'm, I'm like, I'm like, uh, uh, you blink a thousand times. This is my red flag number three. Look how casual. Look how cordial. Look how like, oh, how much free they feel. Oh, how free they feel for the, from the children that bother them with, I gotta go to school. Mommy, I need a new phone. Mmm, look at the boys. Mmm, take me to the parking lot or something. Right? Look how free they feel. No children, no ex-husband. Oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> how are you guys? We're okay. How are you doing, babe? I'm doing pretty good, thanks. I was wondering, where, where are you guys? We're just hanging out. Hanging out? Are you, are you in Idaho? We're no. in Idaho. Oh, okay. Um, I just wanted to ask you a question. Look how much laughter that is. And also keep in mind, like, her friend, the ex-best friend decided to record the phone call. That tells you a lot. I don't record my friend's phone call. I hope they don't record my phone call, but no, there's a certain amount of trust I have with my friends, even unspoken. I'm not recording my friend's phone call. But the fact that you have to go and record, it means that you yourself, you're uncomfortable. Something does not make sense. And if something does not make sense, guys, it doesn't make sense. Stop trying to make sense of something that doesn't make sense. 90% of the time, it doesn't make sense. 10% of the time, you can make it work. But honey, how, how many times? Lady Luck, I told you, Lady Luck is lazy. Lady Luck is like, good luck, <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> if you don't mind, Lori. Yeah, um, I want to know, um, you remember we talked about JJ going to Kay's house and you told me they went there and now he's not there? I was wondering what happened. Well... I had to move him somewhere else because of her actions. That pause is so significant. It's in between that you don't even understand. I tell exactly what happened during that pause. This is a, they're driving. It's a speakerphone. The friend just asks you, where are your kids? Where are your kids? Um... Um, well, I, I, I had to move them. That's exactly what happened. What? Where are your kids? Where is Olympia? Daycare. Where's Olympia right now? Upstairs, sleeping. <laughs> what? I can't I can even tell you where my niece and nephews are. Excuse me? There's so, I, can, I can tell you where they are. There's certain situation like there's no need for thinking. Do you have a job? Yes. Are you employed? Yes. No. Are you happy? Maybe. <laughs> that takes more thinking. But this certain question is yes and no. You guys are parents. You guys are parents. Maybe when the kids is like a teenager, maybe like in their 20s, you might not know where they are. But before, the, before they know how to drive, you know exactly where your kids are, right? And if you don't, I'm looking at you like this. <laughs> anyway, red flag. Red flag. This is not someone that has lost grasp and sense of reality. They may have a different perception, right? They may have a different interpreta interpretation of how they see themselves in that reality. But reality itself, they know there's a sky, they know there's the earth, there's only the earth is round, there's no murdering someone is not a good thing. So they still have a very good grasp 
on reality. There's a difference here. I hope I made that clear. So, was she was she doing something? Like, was she trying to come get him or something? Or, like, trying to kidnap him? Well, she's, yeah, she said that lots of times before, but... Um... Okay, I, well, when, you know, when I asked Chad the other day, I was like... So, right there, she didn't give him... She didn't give him an answer. She was like, um, 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 um. And her friend just proposed an answer. Is it be like kidnapping? And this is where, like, guys, I'm going to teach you a trick. I'm going to teach you a trick. If you're trying to get the truth out of someone, if you know already what the truth is, if you have an idea what the truth is, and you're questioning someone, do not volunteer scenarios. Unless you know that scenario will equate to a definite answer. In other words, she should have been like, so, yeah, what happened? And kept silent. Not, hmm, what happened? Could you be tired? Or maybe you had a nap. Or maybe they were kidnapping her. Don't throw suggestions. If you're inquiring, ask the question, end it there. Let them fumble and find an answer. And then you follow that lead. That's how you catch liars. And that's how you also get narcissists. That's how you catch them round right the fly. Yeah, she was not prepared for a story spin. She really wasn't prepared for a story spin. Definitely not from her. Listen, your kids are missing. Your young kids came and drive. They're missing. Excuse me. Are we laughing? Giggling? No, we're not giggling. We're not laughing. And if I'm not like, if you're not my tr like, if you're just my uh, my boyfriend, I'm like, it's, why are you laughing? Is you think it's funny? Oh no, we're like breaking up very shortly. <laughs> Very shortly. I lost my kids. This is not a laughing matter. Matter of fact, I can't date right now. I'm not mentally right. Break up. <laughs> what? What? That's the commonsensical stuff that will happen. If that stuff doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. Stupid, Lori. Stupid. I'm telling you, they always think they're the best thing ever. Hey, um, you know, where, where is JJ? And he said, for my security... He didn't want me to know, so is there a reason I should be in danger to know where he is? <laughs> no, it's nobody. It's his danger. It's the danger that there's people after me. Okay. We so just felt it, that if you knew, that puts you in a danger. <laughs> well, just in a bad position. Yeah, bad position. Everybody, right. if they don't know anything, then they don't have to say they know. Right, so you're just worried. Okay. Um, I'm just to keep him protected and, and keep you protected and keep yeah. everybody else protected. i appreciate that um well i was wondering why you told the police why he was with me i just needed to use, have somebody that i so i wouldn't have to tell them where he really was because they were going to tell k where he is oh yeah, so is it, do you think it's like your family? Or, you know, like your family, your dad, or, you know, those well, my people? my family, well, not my whole family, but you, as you know, most of my family is working against me and yeah. with her, basically. Yeah. Is JJ safe? He is safe and happy. Okay, well, that's good to hear. Um, Are you afraid of anything? Like, are you afraid to tell me that you're just afraid that he, um, that I could be in danger? Like, you're, you know, like, I don't, like, if I knew, like, how could that hurt me? I don't understand how that could hurt me if I knew where he was. Well, I'm just not telling anybody so that nobody has to say where he is or get questioned to where he is so I can keep him as safe as possible. Yeah. That is the most lazy, that's the laziest excuse any criminals can come up with. I might as well say I didn't feel like telling you. No. <sighs> to have such a complex lie, where are your kids? Oh, they're with um, Marianne. To give, you might think that's not complex. That's actually quite complicated. It's a complicated answer. I'll tell you why it's a complicated answer. Because you have to understand that it's easy to check. I can just call Marianne and ask her. Second thing is, is that if you know your kid is dead, 
Okay, you get away this time. What about next time? You start to create a platform of an escalating lie. Yeah. The third reason why that's a complex answer is because you then have no control. You lose control of the narrative because all the person has to do is go ask Marianne. Right? Giving an answer is actually worse than saying I don't know. Because being ambiguous gives you some sort of power over storytelling. Once you say an answer, you lose the power of the story. That's why it's a complicated answer. And to come up to that decision, there's a lot of complex things that happens here. Okay, now I hope Marianne does not pick up the phone. Do I have to call Marianne and ask her this? Okay, it, like it's a, it becomes very complicated. It's on the surface, it seems very harmless, but you have no idea what goes on in here when someone gives you that answer. Someone like her. Yeah, there's a very fast thought process. And I guarantee you that's a fumble of hers. Because when the question was asked of her, she needed to appear a certain kind of way. And boom. Meaning that Lori, uh, not Lori, her best friend. Uh, what's her name? Doesn't matter. It tells you that her best friend is trustworthy enough for Lori. So Lori just, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, her, boom. And gave the answer. Some people ask, how, like, how do you know all this? Listen, when you dealt with a narcissist, at least the way I dealt with a narcissist, you can smell them. You can, you know, I see them all the time. I see them every day. And um, they are everywhere. People who are entitled and cannot stop talking about themselves all the freaking time. <laughs> Next story. The kids are found, they're dead. She gets arrested, arraigned, as she said, processed. A lot of in-between happens. And then her son, she has not a son. His name is Colby, calls his mom. Now, let me preface something to you. This whole story from Lori to Charles, everybody involved, they're religious. So it's not just Lori who is pious. Everybody in their circle is pious. It's just that Lori and her baby daddy, no, not baby daddy, <laughs> and her man are just revered in a certain kind of way. And their perception of themselves is not like everybody else. So as you hear this conversation, just keep in mind that this is two pious people having a conversation. And one of them is the son and one of them is Lori. That's it, right? Just so, you know, whatever. <laughs> Press and play. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You think you can hide from me? I don't know, hiding, you just start talking to me? Probably because you murdered my siblings. That's probably why you stopped hugging me. Maybe you should understand. I didn't. I'm sorry that you felt that way. You didn't do anything, right? Mom, I've prayed for you in my worst moments. I've prayed for my siblings. Who swore to me were okay. I thought I could trust you. I thought that you were a completely different person. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. Murderous mother. You can make judgments when you weren't there and you don't know what happened. How? What happened? Okay, first thing to understand here, she's still very cavalier. She's like at the mall, she's not at the mall, but she's very nonchalant about this. Two of her children are dead. This is me speaking with the assumption that she, she's innocent, right? Um, you know, because in this country, you're innocent until proven guilty. 
but in the eyes of public opinion, darling. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everyone's making their own judgments. Mom, you've been shoving BS on my throat for a very long time. I'm going to talk to you. It's okay, sweet. Hey, okay, listen to me. I'm not mad. Listen to me. Fine, listen to me. I've sat there and prayed. I can't tell you the amount of pain that I've felt from your decisions. So one of her sons, someone that she carried for nine months and birthed, is coming to her. Let's put away the murder aside for a second. This is your kin. Groveling. It's groveling. Because this is not the first time they've had a talk about this subject matter. And you can tell from saying, I've prayed many times for you. You told me you would tell me what happened, but you haven't told me anything. You keep telling me you're going to tell me what happened, but you haven't said anything. So they've had a conversation before. This is just him coming over at his breaking point, begging for answers. She's still very cavalier about that and very nonchalant about that. She doesn't give a damn. It's not a disconnect from her actions. No, it's not. And I'll tell you why in a very shortly. Why it's not. It's because she believes she is the deity. And her judgment is above the law. And she has judged those two kids as not worthy of life. And so her story spinning does not include anybody else's opinion. That's why she doesn't want to hear it. That's why she feels annoyed by him. That's why she feels like, eh. But the other reason why she also feels pretty disgusted by Colby is because Colby is showing her a mirror. Shobi is like, look who you are. And narcissists do not like that. You show a mirror to a narcissist, they will ghost you or they will harm you. And right there, Lori wants to disengage. And I'll point it out later on. In Jesus Christ's name, it kills me to watch you sit here and tell me this is a trial. It kills me to watch you take the victims you out and say that this shouldn't have happened to you. When you are telling me that Chad Dago came into your life and all of a sudden everything changes. And I'm talking about my spirit feels this. I prayed. I trusted you. I gave you every chance I could pass my own limitations as a human being. I pushed past all of everything to try to get to you to help my own mother. You lied to me, specifically to me, more times than I can count about this. Yeah, so this is an uh, evidence that they've discussed about this issue and she has said Many lies, just like she told lies to her best friend, just like she told lies to the detective. She's a liar. To know that they're gone and you knew, and my phone is being texted by my little sister who's not even alive. Did you hear that? So not only is the sister's dead, that girl we saw earlier, she's dead. They picked up the phone and they texted it as her. While her corpse lay, allegedly, while her, while her alleged corpse lay down, her mother took out her phone and texted, Hi, it's me. Do you see how this is not a sign of where her mindset is? Because someone who has lost complete grasp of reality does not do that. I want to be very clear here because there is the concept of reality. So where you fall within the boundaries of this world, right? And then there is the grasp of reality, how you understand the world. The grasp of reality 
is when, you know, she might be like, I'm God, I'm God, I'm God. The concept means that you understand that um, if you murder someone, this con you understand consequences, cause and effect. You understand right and wrong. And so she has full concept of reality. Her grasp may be a little bit like, meh, 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 but she, she's not fully gone. She's still functional enough within the boundaries of society. You take someone who has lost those two and they fall more on the schizophrenic side. They don't pick and choose. They tell you how, they tell you how it is in their mind. When her daughter was dead, she picked up the phone because she understood very well her action. She understood the consequences. She knew. She knew, darling, that you were not really that God. Stupid. So she took the phone and texted as her daughter. Now, allegedly. It doesn't matter even, even, if, the, even, even, the, even if the guy did it. Who cares? Who cares? The fact is, is that the phone of your dead daughter was picked up and texted as her while you killed her and you buried her on the ground. Stupid, Lori. My little brother, who's the sweetest little kid ever, for what purpose? And you tell me that this is God's will for my whole family, including my stepfather, to be dead. After everything that you try to tell me, you can tell me right now that Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, is on your side. You tell me that with all the conviction in your heart that Jesus Christ is on your side right now. Please. I can't tell you that. Say it. Say his name. Say that he told you. And you followed him on exactness. Because I have prayed for you. I sat there and tried my best to forgive you and Chad and Alex and I was deceived and I was broken by my own mother. What are you doing? What are you doing? I prayed to heavenly Father, and I said, "You tell me, Father." Okay, I'm going to pause it here because maybe you may have missed it. She never answered. The sun here plays into her grasp of reality, which is she's a deity. She is God sent. But Lori still has a concept of reality, meaning she understand that in our understanding, saying in Jesus name or whatever, right? It's sacrilegious if you don't really mean it. She understand the sacrilege of her action. So her graphs of reality and the concept of reality are not on the same page. That's why she cannot find herself to say those words, which is, in my opinion, some serious critical thinking. Again, in my opinion, that she understands right and wrong, which means she did this deliberately. She knew the consequences. She knew what would happen. And she did it anyway. She was not drunk in power. She was not drunk in um, the essence of that. Everybody is like, oh my God, Lori, you're so amazing. You're a God gift. She was not drunk on that. She loved it, but she was very well feet on the earth. Yeah, grounded. Small little bits here, right? She never answered. You take someone who doesn't, who, where the grass and concept of reality are the same, they will tell you. They, yeah, in Jesus, I did it in Jesus Christ's name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which points another thing is that she's still God fearing. Ooh, ooh. it's okay. 
I was going to say something that's going to get me in trouble. <laughs> oh, the beauty of thinking before you speak. <laughs> Do you know the you for me? Do you know you for me? Yes, because you weren't there. So you... You're right. I wasn't there. I was kept in the right. lap. And one day, two kids you will know. Murder. One day. Murder. You will know what actually happened. You're right, because you know what, Matt? And we all will stand there with everything into the light. You're absolutely right. He will convict the people who act in his name with pure blasphemy. (laughs) This funny? She cackled. It wasn't even a laughter. It's a cackle. The difference between a cackle and a laughter, because I cackle a lot, is when it's genuine. A laughter can be faked. A cackle cannot. A cackle is a genuine... It's genuine. She genuinely thought it was funny. Okay, Laurie. Mm-hmm. It's funny? This is funny? This is funny. You're laughing. Like, this is funny. How come your camera's on, Mom? You don't want to look at me in the eye? Why can't you look at me? It's, it's nice just you and me. I'm in my house alone. I love you. I always will. <laughs> one day you will see and one day you will understand. Go ahead and hang I up. Do love you. Yeah, that works for you. You see? The son challenges her and be like, how come your cameras are on? Meaning that they've had camera conversations before. And at the beginning, I remember Kobe was like, hey, are you here? Maybe because the camera was not on. She's like, hey, that's unusual. Where's your camera? She's like, no, I'm here on the phone. Maybe she was waiting to see what the nature of the conversation was going to be before she turned the camera on. Truth of the matter is, she never turned the camera on. Narcissists are absolutely insecure they have no sense of self that's why this idea that she's a deity and a goddess is the utmost amazing feeling a narcissist can have like what i'm god yay yeah but what colby is doing here he's showing the mirror constantly and they cannot stand that they are so embarrassed about themselves they have so much shame they cannot face the mirror. And you know what? You know what shame means? Shame falls again in the idea of concept of reality. It means you understand very well where you stand, what you've done, and what is coming and what is going on. Someone who is not out here feel no shame. They feel no shame. They also feel no fear. No, she's fully functioning up here. She's not a psychopath. She's not a sociopath. She's none of that. She's none of that. You gonna hang up? I don't. I don't have anything else to say. You obviously don't know. You 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 weren't there. You weren't there. Summer wasn't there. My mom wasn't there. The police weren't there. The FBI weren't there. Your mom was there. Was there. Do you wanna know why she didn't hang up? Because he called her out on it. Look, I should write a book, How to Deal with a Narcissist. Um, yeah. One technique, if you plan, is to f- stop the narcissist from walking away. You tell them they're going to walk away. And by default, because they don't like to be told what to do, by default, they will go against what you ordered. <laughs> you win. They can't even control it. I can speak to you freely about this. They can't control it. It's auto, it's like uh, automatic in their head. They can't control it. Because if you tell them stay, if you, if you tell them you're going to hang up and they hang up in their mind, they lost. And that's going to eat them up nonstop in their head. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Kylie and JJ mom. Yeah, and guess what? They know. They know exactly what happened. And they love me. And we are still together forever. They love me. And they are fine. And they do know the truth. And I know the truth. And we're the only people that do. So you can judge me, Colby, all day long. Go ahead and judge me. The whole world has. The whole world has judged me. Listen to me, 
people. They don't hey, know and you, you don't, don't know. know. You don't know what I've been through, You're, and you don't even give a crap what they've been through. Nobody does. I don't except for me. I'm the one that knows. I'm the one that was in the hospital with Tylee no, 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 for hundreds of days watching her suffer. Oh. I'm the one that was there doing everything with JJ every day. I was the one who did it all these years. You did it all to throw it in the garbage. They're not. You don't know what them. happened. Okay. You don't know what Does happened. It freaking matter what happened if they're buried in your new husband's backyard. Tell me that matters what happened. You tell me that you did this in Jesus' name, Mom. I have to hear that out of you. If you believe it, then you are not afraid. Every witness of Christ will scream his name when he comes back. So you are that person. You I am that person. That I Jesus am that person. Christ. And she will come to you. Oh, yeah, Colby, cool, because that's what it is. Okay. You don't even know. You weren't even when there. I you October, when I asked you about Sally in October, what did you tell me? What did you tell me? What lies did you feed me? Why would you lie to me if you were so, if you're with the Lord and you've seen him and I'm just talking purely to you and you've seen Jesus Christ, where's the fear? Why would you tell me something? Why were you afraid? Why is everyone against you? Why is everything okay, against my mom? You can be against me all you want. One day, we will all stand there with Jesus. We will all stand there with Jesus, and you will know the truth of everything. Not for me. You're telling me that this was all done in light. Say it. Tell me that this was done in Jesus' name. You don't know what happened. Why? Why don't I know, Mom? Oh, because I was kept in the dark to protect me? You know who needed protecting my little dead siblings? That's who needed protecting, Mom. This Where is you? not a that what you think you need? You ran away. I had it been killed. A month later, you ran away. I never wanted you guys to leave. I would have taken those kids in one second. I would bring them into my home, and I would have taken care of them. That's not even a question to me. Yeah, everybody you says can't that. say that you know. Everybody says that. Says it now? Where was my offer? I was the offer to Colby. Well, you I had had been for just for a week. Well, me, I had me and Peter Griffin run away together to Hawaii? How about that? If you would have offered me, you would have known. You cannot sit here and lie. That's what everybody I am That is not the truth. Okay? That's what people they are thinking. They were murdered, they were put in the ground, and then you walk away. So you don't know. No, 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 you, you don't know that. They no, that, that is not tell what happened. That is what not happened. what happened. You tell me what happened. If you can tell me what happened, then I don't care. If you can actually explain it, then it's different. I would love but you can't. to talk to you about it. Mom, you've been saying that you've been wanting to tell me for a very long time, and you never say it. You have no idea how much pain I have felt in my body. I feel like I could die. My own mom, my siblings, and my whole family, my dad are... Everyone is gone except for you, and you're in jail because of it. I have prayed to Heavenly Father Himself and asked Him to help me survive this. Do you understand the a freaking earthquake that has been caused? Do you know how many people are hurt and broken now? And you're telling me that there's a reason? Why are you following Chad down the rabbit hole, Mom? Why would you follow anybody that is not good. How can you follow someone that cannot lead you to salvation in Jesus, Mom? You can't lie to me anymore. You can't pretend anymore. You can't hide anymore. If you want to tell me what happened, I called you for that very reason. You had enough condemnation for the whole entire eternity, but you're telling me that you're going to stand in front of Jesus Christ and you're going to be fine. That I'm still praying for you. I am still praying for you. I don't know where the lies and all these things are written. I don't see it. I never have. The light of Jesus Christ is the most powerful thing that's ever lived. It's the most loving, embracing thing that has ever happened to this world. And I pray that you see him and fall into his grace. I pray 
every day. I pray, no matter how mad I am at you, no matter how bad I want to hit your husband in the face with a shovel, I pray for you. I pray for him. You ripped my heart out and you ripped out everyone in this family's heart out. I'm going to be in Idaho next, this week. You need to look me in my eye, Mom. Look me in my eye. Well, <clears throat> so, um, he's looking for closure. He's looking for answers. He's not going to get it. This is going to man. This is going to be a man who's going to go through the rest of his life completely distraught. The level of trauma is going to be unexplainable. He's going to need an unbelievable amount of therapy to handle and manage what's to come. Because that's going to be a storm. Do you want to know why it's going to be a storm? Let's go to the next segment. So the kids were found in deplorable conditions. Um... <laughs> I'm going to skip through all that. Look, I'll tell you right away. JJ, she's the boy, wrapped, wrapped, duct tape, plastic, wrapped like a mummy, and buried. Um, Tylee, which is the girl that we saw, dismembered and her body parts burned and then buried at the house of this man man uh -huh. listen to me even um This is very hard to talk about because this scenario also hits close to home. For those who know me, you might be like, oh my God, I'll stare. You've been through everything. Yes, I've been through everything you can think of. Mm -hmm. I have. I don't know what to tell you. I'm 38 years old, but I've lived a life of someone who is like, I don't know, 90, 100 when I tell you that I'm lucky to be alive, yes, you have my father, who was a complete lunatic. They would survive from him, but there was a, I survived from the fact that I was an unprotected child who went through life. I am lucky. Lady Luck happened to stumble and fall on my lap because she's lazy. Maybe one day I'll share that story with you. Huh. <sighs> Me one day. They survived. But this situation, this story, the Lori Valo story is not far from what I have lived and what I am partially still living. Mm. Let's go to my final thought. Mm -hmm. A quick disclaimer for my final thought. You know, when I come in and I report to you a lot of times, I take a lot of notes and I do as many research as I can, but I'm human, I make mistakes, and maybe I made a mistake today. So if I got a particular point wrong, a particular uh, per, uh, personage, a particular character of the story wrong, I apologize, okay? Don't be too hard on me. I'm not a journalist. But my point is I want to share with you what I think was and still is Lori's mindset, because with her mindset, then you can really understand intent. And in the in the spectrum of public opinion, she's guilty in my book. This is my opinion. We'll see what the court says. The trial is going on right now, and the trial is not being televised. However, um, a lot of 
moving pieces. And you know there's a lot of in-between that I catch because I'm nosy. In this saga of the story, this is just part one, and I'm going to uh, we're gonna go backwards a little bit so we understand her and the events better. Because it can get quite confusing, especially when the trial is not being televised. And we're going to progressively go until we are current. We're going to analyze her body language after Charles died, her ex-husband. Because, you know, she called the life insurance policy literally the next day. Keep that in mind, right? So, um, her brother kills her ex-husband. The same day, they go and eat lunch at Burger King. And the next morning, she calls in life insurance policy. Too casual. But even if you remove all that, her daughter was decapitated and burnt and buried. Okay, forget that. Her little boy was wrapped and buried. The severity, oh, oh, oh and buried in the backyard of her ex. Now, <laughs> Maybe she's innocent, but honey, I'm I'm breaking up with you, ex. I mean, uh, not ex, a uh, uh, backyard of her current boyfriend. But no, she's still they're still together. Matter of fact, they went to Hawaii. And they, yeah, as you heard, they were on the phone call that her best friend called. They were having a good time and laughing. Hi, sweet Melanie. Hello. What? None of it makes sense. It doesn't make sense because it doesn't make sense. But we're also going to look into the prosecution. Because I think the prosecution is doing a little bit of a bad job. And the prosecution is going to confuse the jury. So we're going to look into that. We're going to look into their defense. And we're going to come to a conclusion with that. That's going to be an awesome saga. And as far as the question goes, she is 100% a narcissist. She is deadlier than Daryl Brooks. Because Daryl just wanted to kill the baby mama. But no, honey, she skipped all that. She went straight for the progenies. <laughs> and the spouse, because her ex-husband is dead, allegedly. She was, she was like, you know what? She's charred earth kind of person. Follow me along this story. I'm going to make it entertaining. I'm going to make it um, understanding. Mm. Um, but before we go to my last talk, uh, if you're here to this point, that means you like me enough. Did you press the like button? I hope you did. And if you did not press the like button, did you subscribe? I hope you definitely did. And if you didn't, what do you think this is for? Do you think this is just for your good eyes? <laughs> Do something! I said that in the most politely nice way. Uh-huh. I said to let's talk. Okay. Uh, I've mentioned to you in an earlier segment that this is something very close to me, this whole story. And, you know, the reality is, is that this is not a common. This is not a common, there's many families who go through situations where there is a um, misunderstanding of grasp of realities. And uh, of course, there's always that one family member who's trying to impose their grasp onto others. And then it creates friction and it leads to uh, dysfunction, but never to a murderous dysfunction. But this story is not uncommon. The uncommon part maybe is the murder of the kids. Murder of maybe a friend or whatnot, that's not uncommon. You'd be very surprised how common this is. So um, I share just a little bit and then I'm going to um, you know, shut my mouth because I'm living it today. Yes. So, um, i share what I can because uh, 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 I cannot speak for my family member, but let's just say that um, 
an intervention was needed. Um, anyway, they're getting better. Consequences, there's consequences. No jail time. Consequences, of course, but they're doing better. But in the same breath, in the same breath, the reason why I'm currently living in it is because, you know, my mom and I have different opinions when it comes to mm, how to live my life. And, you know, I am beyond that. I'm not an 18-year-old kid anymore. And uh, I grew up very unprotected. But honey, I'm very well protected today. And I'm not doing anything for anyone. Period. So when I say a no, it is a no. And I am not interested in being forced influence by anything. I'm beyond that point. I'm beyond those years. I mean, I am influenced and, inf and influenceable in certain aspects. But when it comes to the core things of who I am, you could try all you want. I'm not interested. And so that's the, that's the difficulty in me, my mom. Of, that's the hurdle my mother and I have, have had to surmount. Because it got to a point where <laughs> it got to a point where it crossed my line. And that's my mom. That's my mom. Honey, I told her, have a seat. Matter of fact, grab your bags and you can go. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. And, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> not to go into much details. Um, you know, she had to do a lot of soul searching for us to, this is, this is even during the divorce is before divorce, during divorce. The, like when I tell you my family has been healing since 2016, it's, it's true on many facets, many facets. And when she walked out of my house, you know, she was apologizing. I said, listen, it's not even a qu like you apologize. You don't need to apologize. I understand exactly where you stand. It does not match with where I see myself and where I am. And, you know, I'm not fighting with you. I don't love you any less, but this is a this is a situation that neither sides are able to compromise. Then we part ways. It's a divorce. We, we part ways. I said, because the way you see things and operate does not match with how I see things and operate. This is beyond a point of a compromise, right? Because there's a big difference here because, you know, uh, you know I'm married and, uh, and my spouse and I are very different people. And we operate differently and we do stuff differently. But, you know, we always find a way to come in the middle and operate. The day when that's not possible, that's a divorce. I'm sorry to break it to you. But um, people who think they will never get divorced, grow up. <laughs> grow up. Just because you're all lovey and all happy doesn't mean that you, today is great. Tomorrow might not be. Ten years might not be. You understand? Grow up. Because the truth and reality is, is that, you know, you need to be in constant communication, always check in. And people, when people grow, they change. Now, when you change, are you still able to come in the middle and operate? And are you willing to try and compromise so you can operate and meet in the middle? If the answer is no, darling, you are going down the wrong road because it's just a matter of time before you separate. Or at least live a miserable life. And uh, no, life's too short. And I got too much to lose to be miserable. So I said to him, I was like, I don't love you any less. It's not, it's not about that. And so you might ask yourself, well, why'd you, why'd you ask her to leave? Because the line she crossed was also part of my safety line. Now, would I think my mom would harm me physically? I didn't know at that time. I wasn't sure. Therefore, I'm not taking the chance. Please, I put her in a hotel. Yeah, it's like, no, she's not. No, no please. And there, that, there was no other option. There was like, no, blah, blah, blah. no, 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 no. It's like 10 p.m. I want to go to sleep. And you're going like right now. <laughs> Bye. But you know what that did? It made her go home and it made her think. It made her think. 
Because one fundamental going to tell you, right? And I say that all the time. You could believe whatever you want. You could be whatever you want. The moment that crosses the line of physical harm, the moment you believe that I should die, get hurt, I'm gone. This is where we're no longer on the same page. Because I am too busy to try to convince you to think how I think. No, I don't have the time. I don't have the time. I don't have the time. Please. All I want to do is have fun and laugh. I don't have time to spend there and break my head in trying to convince you to think like I do. No. Now, we can share ideas. We can share our perception. We can share how we see things. But the moment you're like, you know what, Alistair? You're not like that. Therefore, you must be harmed. You can just go ahead and D-I-E. I'm going to K-I-L-L you. I'm going to harm you, honey, because I'm I'm skittish anyway. So I'd be like this. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'd say yes to everything you say. I'd say yes to everything. Okay, you're right. You're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. You're right. Just to appease you, please. You think I care? I would appease the hell out of you. And then when it's time to go, bye. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Okay. And I go back to my safety and you'll never see me again. Yeah. You think, you think you got to win? Honey, I escaped. That's what it was. That's, that's what it is. So mm, listen to me. I'm not about that life. I got too much to lose. You understand? Too much to lose and uh what happened afterwards is that she realized one thing and she realized that she was giving me ultimatums but the ultimatums <laughs> the uh, the ultimatums was not like you know like you lose a fingernail the other ultimatum was that harm would happen to me and uh and that you know, I have my daughter through surrogacy and this is before she was born. And I was announcing my family members like, look, you're about to have an addition to the family. Really? How? Surrogacy. Oh, oh, oh. And comments were made. I don't fight. <laughs> I hardly argue like that. I just kept quiet and I listened and I made decisions right there and then because it's, it's something I'm not willing to compromise. So therefore, there's no discussion about to happen. There's no needed discussion. What's the compromise here? that I don't do, I don't get my daughter, it's not a compromise. So I just left, but I kept notes. And uh, so I, t I said to my mom, I was like, um, uh, no, she, you know, she's like, that's crossing a line. And she said what she said, I was like, well, you can go. And, uh, and then she called me on the way there and she was trying to, she, first of all, she thought I was not serious. I'm serious. <laughs> And she called me and we had a conversation. And what my mother does is that she gives, she, she does a, a tie. She gives 10% 10 10 of her yearly income <laughs> to a church in Nigeria. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10 10%. 10%. I'm getting mad. I'm getting very really mad about it, but it's okay. It's okay because she's not doing it anymore. But just the thought of it that she was doing it for all these years, 10%. Uh, and you know, she's retired anyway. So still, I said to my mom, I said, I want you to realize one thing is that you are giving money to an entity that wishes your son dead. How am I supposed to take this? It's your money. I've never pushed you on this. But I, I see, I understood. I didn't question you too much on it because it's something I can look past. It's not one of my red lines. I can live with it. But I want you to process this for a second. You are contributing and giving financial support to an entity that wishes nothing but to see your son dead. How am I supposed to take where you stand? And how am I supposed to feel super comfortable to be in your presence, especially after the comment you've made? And how do you expect me to put my daughter in your presence? Explain that to me. 
and uh, it clicked. She said, I understood. I said, yeah. Yeah. So um, it needed, it, it, requ it required a lot of uh, trusting and healing, but i be very honest with you, and I've very opened my mind, I said, I still don't trust her with my daughter by herself. That's it. That's it. You might throw tomatoes, I'll dodge them all, because I don't really quite care. You know, if you if one thing about my kid, <laughs> don't play with me. I really don't quite care. But I said, I'm not ready for you to be by yourself with my daughter. Period. I said, okay. That's it. So um, to give you this idea right here of this lorry lunatic, it's very common. It's very common in a lot of households. And, uh, and I'm super fortunate that I was, that Lady Luck happened to trip and fall in my stupid lap and gave me the luck to survive my journey. And in surviving my journey, because what doesn't kill you make it stronger or it could go the other way, honey, I have fortified my situation. No, 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 and no. So, uh, mm-hmm. That's the story. Um, anyway. <laughs> this is Let's Talk 14. Listen, I don't know if you can tell the difference, but um, Ashley, my niece, came here and she adjusted the setting on the camera. So I don't know how that's going to look in the editing, but this is supposed to look better. Like she adjusted the pixels. So it's more pixels. So like I look more real and stuff. And uh because the lighting, so the, the wall is black, absorbs light, but there's a lot of lighting going on. So if I don't change the setting on the camera, it becomes a mess. She said, Uncle Alistair, no, 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 no. So she's like, Uncle Alistair, you're so stupid. If you change anything, you have to adjust the setting of the camera. I was like, how am I supposed to know? Do you know how old I am? I'm 38 years old. I don't have all that tech stuff yet. I mean, not yet. I don't have it. I don't have it like that. Back in my days, you had to meet someone like this. Hello. Hi. Hi. You're so beautiful. So are you. You want to hook up? Sure. Yeah, go home. If you stay home all day, you get nothing. So back in my day, I had to get out and do things <laughs> to get things. Yeah, if I just stay home in my little cubby over there, I would, yeah, 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 nothing happens to you. Today, you just get on your phone and get an app and get everything given to you. Back in my day, you had to work. You got to get out and got to work. Got to go on two feet and walk, walk and work. You understand? So I'm not used to this autonomous situation here. I don't know. I don't know. Besides, I'm too busy. I don't know. Anyway. So, <clears throat> uh, there, that's the little story for you for the last talk. <sighs> you know, I kept it very quick together. There was many times where I was on the verge of tears because of, you know, personal stuff. But no, I kept it together. I'm getting better at this. I'm getting better at this. I'll tell you a small little secret. And then I have to go very soon. Editing. Um, I've been working on my therapist to manage <laughs> you. <laughs> I don't know if I told, did I tell you that already? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, I need to take a small break. Phone call. It was Linda. Such great news. Let me tell you something. Um, you know, in life, the one thing you don't have to work on is the trust between a parent and child. You know why they say it's the sanctity is sacred? Because it's the only time in life where you don't have to work for trust. Do you know how hard it is to get someone's trust? Your children would, 99% of the time, they will believe anything you say. Anything you say. That's why it's so important that you are so careful with your words when you are a person of influence. It doesn't have to be a million people, even one person. You gotta be very careful what you say because your words can change someone's life. Yeah. I'll give you another example of mine. My nephew-in-law. Tall. Actually, my real nephew. <laughs> They're both like men. They're like six feet and plus. Uh, 15, 16, they work out. They, like, I don't know what their parents feed them, but their muscles are popping out everywhere. They look like men. One, one, my nephew-in-law is white and my, nephew, my real nephew is black. And, um, 
and you know i'm i know exactly where they are i keep touch with them because you know what as an uncle <laughs> it's in my it's in my interest for them to be the best version they can be it's part of my family circle yes come on come on come on guys we're doing this together we're in this together together we're stronger i check in on them yes of course and i tell them i tell them all the time i said you're very strong listen and i know like the testosterone the hormones do your best do your best to resolve your issue with words and if you cannot just walk away just walk away just walk away walk away don't resort to violence that's not okay they do their best. I'm not saying for profession, but that's what I preach. That's what I preach. I preach all the time. Because, you know, you cannot spend your time trying to convince someone to think the way you think. You could say it one time. If they, oh, wait, that's a good piece of information. Great. If they don't, you're wasting your time. That's too much effort. You have better things to do with your time, like live your life and have a good time and have a good laugh. Just don't cross that line of violence. But if someone crosses that line with you, I tell them that too. No, you pummel them, of course, percent. If someone assaults you, oh, honey, you pummel them never to rise again. What else am I gonna talk about? You know, I sit here and I ramble, ramble. <laughs> if you're here, that means you're one of my regulars. Hello, 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 hello. Mm. Oh, do you know what I've been doing lately? <laughs> First of all, I shaved. <laughs> What? I shaved. I shaved. So you might be like, okay, big deal. No, it's a big deal. And that means I have some time to shave. I've been working a lot behind the scenes. I can't divorce too much. But no, I'm not being lazy. I have a full blown schedule and a kid and two businesses to handle. Okay. This is my well be business number three. But um I'm working I'm working behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. And um and uh, Olympia, we're always sick. Peace is daycare. We always have something. So I've stopped complaining about that. I'm not a big complainer, but you know, whatever. So not lately. Oh my God. The 80s music, the, the disco music in the 80s. What? I've been jamming to that. Um, what's the recent one that's on my phone? I can put it up, right? Can I put it up? Oh, but I have to change the camera. I don't know the name. But uh, boom, bump a jam. Bump it up. I bump it. Oh, what? That whole genre? Oh, you don't understand. You don't even understand. No, and I have big speakers. Please, and you know, it's my house. I can do it if I want. I blow that sound like it's crazy. Olympia's not here. She's at daycare. Uh, I work from home. I have much more control over my schedule. Uh, Chris, I only do it when he's not when he's at the gym. So you know, because he works in the at home at the office. But I pump that volume so loud because it's nice outside with the breeze. Yeah, I'm having a good by myself. Bam, 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 ba -da -dam, bam, 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 and uh, the the speakers are all over the house. No matter where I go, it's like boom, bump it, jam, bump it up. What? Such good time. Like I have been having the best time of my life, dancing to everything. Wow! And I was like, wow, this music is really good. I would, I am made for the '80s, I guess, the disco era. What? Yeah, that's my. I was like, I should have been there. <laughs> can't wait for tomorrow because you know i have a playlist and i discover new songs every time so i'm like oh, oh check this out and then i put it into my ipod and i <laughs> i have an ipod i never throw things away but anyway so i put my up and i go to the gym and i'm like it's <clears throat> great with my big poof headphones i have them here so um, it's a different version. This is a little, whatever. It's a different version. So like I go like this and uh, I don't want to be disturbed when I work out. Don't talk to me. If this says talk to me, I don't know what else I could do. No, I don't, I don't work out. It's my me time. I'm not interested in your conversation. Don't talk to me. I'm not, leave me alone. And so, mm, and, I, and I'm running. Yeah. <laughs> Just small moments like that that really makes my day you know because because most of my day is serious most of my day is really serious most of my day is serious 
Mm. So moments like that when I could just let go and let loose. Honestly, I say if I win the lottery, I win the lottery to do nothing. I, I win the lottery, I quit everything and I do nothing. Please. I just focus on raising my daughter and uh, that's it. What else? Okay. I think there was something I need to tell you, but my condition is really taking over today. What did I want to say? Um... <laughs> Okay, wait, 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 wait. Oh, right, there's something new. <laughs> it's it's a behind the scene new. I got a new giddy up that's allowing me to edit. That's saving me one hour of edit of editing. It might not seem like a lot, but it's a lot. So normally it's three hours of edit plus one hour of filming. That's four hours per video. That's not even counting the research I gotta do and the uproaring flow. So six hours per video. Do you know how much that is? Like, who has six hours to give like that? Like, honey, I gotta, you know, how, you know how, how overworked I am. Six hours, and I'm a parent. So, uh, <laughs> this system just removed one hour. So now it's five hours per video. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna streamline this. So my goal is to bring this to about three hours per video. That's my goal. So, uh, what I got is, uh, what did I get? Okay, so I got an external, external, like, drive. But my niece and nephew are helping me with this because I don't understand any of that. I got an external drive and it's directly connected to my phone. See this? It's connected to the camera. So whenever I talk to you, it's over there. There is no transferring required. Then all I do is I take this drive, I go upstairs, I go into the editing room. That's it. Before I would have to I would have to chop what I film and upload it. That takes about an hour to upload all of that. There's no no timer. That's it. It's like five, ten minutes. <laughs> Look, it's connected. It's connected directly, directly, directly to my thing. <laughs> what? But apparently, uh, uh, from what I understood, is that because this is, I have a Samsung, this is a MacBook, Chromebook, upstairs is a PC. So there needs to be a conversion going on. Mm. So uh, they, 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 got, they got what they got. That's it. <laughs> Ashley fixed the, the cameras and stuff. And uh, and the other guys, my little nephews, tech savvy people, were like, and so here I am. Mm -hmm. I have no, if something breaks, I have no idea how to fix it. Because <laughs> I was like, fix it. I'll go make us make us some lunch. Uh, so yeah, that's good. The next step now is to streamline my how I collect my data, my information, because two hours of research is just too much. I need to cut this down by one hour. Do you understand what I'm saying? So uh, I'm going to be a little smarter with that. And I'm going to rely on you to correct me. So I'm like, you know what? Look, we're friends and family here. I, I, you know, I, I talk a lot of smack. We talk smack together. I'm very open with you guys. I don't have time to be fake in any way, shape, or form. Who has time for that? No, I don't have time for that. So I figure, you know what? You guys will correct me if I make a mistake. And I, I, I know her feelings. What happened? <laughs> what the hell happened? Um... I don't know what happened. See? Uh, uh, hi! Uh, I don't know what happened. Maybe because I played with the wire, so the thing was like, uh, too heavy, uh, MF. Sorry, wire, sorry. Oh, okay, look. So this is a sign. Um. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> I see you. Uh, I love you for watching. Oh, my God. Alistair. Okay, well. Where's the cat? Oh, there it is. No, there. I love you for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.